In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to assign a default value to a parameter. So here we're using the procedure we created earlier, get clients by state. Now let's make up a rule. If the color of the store procedure doesn't specify the state, we want to return the clients in California by default. So here before executing this query, we can write an if statement like this. If state is null, then we want to give it a default value. And for that, we use the set statement. Set state to California. And obviously, we need to terminate this statement with a semicolon. So if this condition is true, we assign a default value to this parameter. Now, whenever we use the if statement, we should always terminate it with and if. Because if this condition is true, we might have multiple statements here. So we need to tell MySQL what is the end of the if block, okay? Now let's go ahead and recreate this procedure. All right, our procedure is created, beautiful. Now let's go ahead and call this procedure with null. So I'm gonna open a new query window. And here we're gonna call get clients by state. And we pass null as the parameter. So this returns the clients in California. Note that here we have to specify a value, even null, because if we leave it out, MySQL is gonna complain, all right? So let's add null here. Now let me show you a really powerful trick. Back to a procedure, let's change the rule. What if instead of returning the clients in California, we wanna return all clients? How can we do that? Here's one way. Instead of giving our parameter a default value, we can write a separate query like this. Select everything from the client table. Then we add an else statement. So if this condition is not true, then we want to return the clients in a given state. So we can move this query up here. Let's fix the indentation. That's better. So we have an if statement followed by an else statement and finally end if. Let's recreate this procedure. All right, now back to our query window. If we don't supply the state, we get all the clients. If we pass a state like California, we only get the clients in California. Beautiful. However, this approach is a little bit verbose and it looks amateurish. We can combine these two queries into a single query. Let me show you how. So I'm going to delete all these if and else statements as well as end if. So we have the same query we had before. Now I'm going to change the where clause like this. If null, state, comma, c dot state. What's going on here? You learned about the if null function in the last section, right? If the first value is null, this function returns the second value. So here, if we set the parameter to null, this function will return c dot state, and our where clause will essentially look like this, where c dot state equals c dot state. This condition is always true because a value is always equal to itself. It's like writing one equals to one. We're comparing the value in a column with itself, right? So let's revert this. With this technique, we can optionally filter data. All right, here's a fantastic exercise for you to practice what you have learned so far. Write a store procedure called get payments with two parameters client ID, which is an integer, and payment method ID, which is a tiny integer. So both these data types are used for storing whole numbers. A tiny integer takes one byte of memory, and with this, we can store numbers from 0 to 255. Integer takes four bytes, and with this, we can store larger numbers. Once again, we'll look at data types later in the course when we talk about database design. But if you're curious, you can simply search for MySQL int size. In this table, you can see various data types for storing whole numbers. We have small int that takes two bytes of memory, and this is the maximum value we can store in two bytes. We also have medium int, int, which we have seen so far, big int, and so on. So back to our procedure. Both these parameters should be optional. So if we pass null for both of them, our procedure should return all the payments in the database. If we supply the client ID, it should only return the payments for this client. If we set both these parameters, it should return all the payments for the given client using the given payment method. 
It's a fantastic exercise and it helps you get ready for a job. All right, here's the solution. Let's create a new procedure. We're going to call this get payment. This procedure needs two parameters. The first one is client ID, which is an integer. And the second is payment method ID, which is a tiny integer, right? Now here we write a select statement to select everything from the payments table, where here we need to type two conditions because we have two ways to filter data. The first one is for the client. So p dot client ID is equal to, once again, we use the if null function. If the client ID parameter is null, we want to use the same value and the client ID column, right? Let me zoom out. All right, this is our first condition. Then we need to apply the and operator followed by our second condition. P dot payment method is equal to, so note that the name of this column in this table is payment method, not payment method ID. As I told you before, this is one of the real world scenarios. When you work with an existing database, a lot of times you see that the name of the columns are not consistent, all right? So you'll have to deal with that. Once again, we use the if null function. If the payment method ID parameter is null, you want to use p.payment method. Once again, it's not fitting on the screen. Let me break this down. All right, better. So this is the final solution. Now let's test it. Click apply and then create the procedure. Beautiful. I'm going to open a new query window and call the get payments procedure with two values, null and null. Now, technically, the values that we pass here are called arguments. A lot of developers don't know the difference between arguments and parameters. Parameters are the placeholders or the little holes that we define in our procedures or functions. So in our procedure, we defined these two parameters, client ID and payment method ID. The values that we supply for these parameters are called arguments. Okay, so anyway, back here, let's execute this procedure. So this returns all the payments in a database, beautiful. What if we pass one for the client ID? Now we only see the payments for this client. What if we pass five? Now it returns all the payments for client number five. Note that the last payment has a different payment method. So let's filter that too. I'm gonna pass two for the payment method. And now we only see this record. What if we pass three? We don't see anything because this client doesn't have a payment using this payment method, all right? And also, as one last test, let's pass null for the client ID and two for the payment method. We want to see all the payments using this method. So we only have a single record. 